In the late 50s, more residents left lured by newer housing and modern furnishings. The old South End fell into decline. The brewery district, abandoned since Prohibition, fared no better. There were a lot of homeless people living here. There were vacant buildings, and it was, it was pretty depressed. Much of the incentive to restore German Village came from this, the construction of Interstate 70 through downtown Columbus. Like a giant knife, it sliced off a third of the old German neighborhood. The urban renewal and freeways, everybody was doing it. So, you know, you can't point to Columbus and say, gee, we were unenlightened. That was enlightened thinking at the time. And parts of the area had deteriorated more than others. The area north of Interstate 70, immediately adjacent to the downtown core, had seen much heavier deterioration, to the point where civic leaders had come to the conclusion that a 60-plus area acre area could only be saved by removing it. It was called Market Mohawk. It took out the old Central Market and the area immediately adjacent to it. People sometimes wonder, what did much of that area look like before it was removed in the 1950s and 1960s? The short answer is, it looked a lot like German Village. Even Umbrella Girl left. Sometime in the 1950s, she disappeared from Schiller Park, a mystery that was never solved. In the 60s, Schmidt's Packing House closed its doors. The Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church survived, but was ultimately separated from German Village by the interstate construction. Frank Fetch and a number of other people come together around 1960 and conclude that this area not only can be saved, that it should be saved. When the program was first started, the historical district, we felt as though there should be little shops, restaurants, whatnot, scattered throughout the village rather than a concentration of uh, activities. In 1959, Frank Fetch bought this house and renovated it. It has often been credited as the first house to start the German village movement. During the restoration, there was a newspaper person walking down the street, stopped and started talking with him. And the newspaper guy, within a couple of weeks, had an article in the paper. And that created a lot of interest. People were going, coming down purposely to see that. Frank Fetch knew how to promote. He had his supporters and his detractors. But looking back, no one disagrees with his vision or denies his success. He could be um, very stubborn, uh, very argumentative. Uh, at the same time, he had an unbelievable passion and energy and could convince a lot of people. He was a little dour, but he, he had our best interests in mind. He called a meeting, open meeting, in 1960 in Schiller Park. 200 people showed up that were as concerned as he was about saving the neighborhood. Didn't expect that. And 183 of them signed up to be charter members of the German Village Society. And what they begin to do is acquire houses in this general area, begin to fix them up, exteriors only, mostly so that they can be resold in relatively short order. Banks simply were not giving loans. It was just unheard of to be buying property down here. People were moving out. The city was trying to demolish. It was just unheard of for these people to be buying property with the thought of improving it. So I think the banks just kind of thought they were crazy. I can remember uh, on one particular deal, I had to get money to, uh, to make up a 15, 20% loan, and I went to a loan shark in Columbus. It was worth it to do it because I wanted that property. To fix them up actually cost a great deal more 
than what one could purchase them for. And the whole gambit was, could one even recover one's investment? Other persons simply moved down here because they saw a preservation community that was becoming increasingly successful and re-establishing a sense of community within the inner city. It was very evident that the thing was going to go even a lot better than a lot of people realized. And then they began to come in from everywhere and started to want to buy up these small houses. I couldn't keep away from it. I thought I was going to lose my job because I spent too much time there. And uh, I just had to be there. Frank Fitch, German Village uh, Patriot. Come over one day at the packing house and uh, told me about going into the German village theme, you know. The whole area started to do a little rumblings of a restoration. And it was a unique restoration because it was done by private individuals. Dad saw that uh, and knew he owned this building, so he opened up the restaurant in 67, the summer of 67. From that point on, it just started to gain momentum. More people started to work uh, to restore their areas, their sidewalks, their streets. Mm -hmm. 